Here's more of my coverage of this year's Oscar-nominated short films. Next, the live-action shorts. Like most of the nominees, but shorter. This felt like the weakest set overall for me, but there were some standouts. Not all movies based on comics are created equal, and Ivalu, based on a graphic novel, is proof. A young girl in Greenland is looking for her missing sister Ivalu, while her father doesn't seem to care. She follows a raven across Greenlandic landscapes looking to find her, while reflecting on her memories. This film has some beautiful cinematography before ending with a devastating conclusion. It has some pretty heavy themes, but handles them with a light touch, which makes what happens all the more impactful. That's more than I can say for the next short. Night Ride starts out seeming like it's going to be a comedy, but it isn't long before it becomes something far more disturbing. A woman inadvertently hijacks a tram and finds herself picking up passengers, who are oblivious to the truth. At some point, though, she finds herself the witness to an increasingly aggressive incident of transphobic harassment and struggles with what to do. It was arguably the hardest short to watch for me, though it does have something of a cathartic conclusion. While it carries an important message, this one was pretty rough, and I'd argue not in a good way. Disney isn't in the animated shorts category this year, but they do have a nominee in the live-action shorts this year. And not only that, but from Italy. The Pupils is set in an Italian Catholic all-girls boarding school during wartime, where the strictness of the nuns leads some of the girls to realize that maybe being bad may actually be a good thing. It's a gentle comedy drama that's often playful in its style. While I thought it was cute and often funny, it was somewhat light on substance. The Red Suitcase was easily one of the best shorts of the five. A 16-year-old Iranian girl arrives in a Luxembourg airport where her husband is waiting as part of an arranged marriage. Hoping to escape, she makes a decision to take off her headscarf in the hope that she'll blend in more with others. It's a nail-biting thriller in miniature, and I really felt for the protagonist. It's a harrowing and incredible piece of short filmmaking. Finally, an Irish goodbye follows two brothers, one with Down syndrome, after the death of their mother as they attempt to complete her bucket list with the remains. It's an incredibly funny and heartfelt short, with great performances, specifically James Martin, who I particularly enjoyed. It's somewhat cliched, but one of my favorites of the five. Heck, I'd watch this as a feature. In terms of the winner, I'd argue that the Red Suitcase would be my pick, with an Irish goodbye as the possible second choice. A lot of people are predicting the pupils, but I felt like it didn't have quite enough to warrant a win. Finally, the documentary shorts, Little Bits of Truth. Last year, Jay Rosenblatt was nominated for When We Were Bullies, a deeply polarizing short about memory and elementary school politics. Now he's nominated again for How Do You Measure a Year? And yes, Seasons of Love does show up in this short at some point. The short comprises a series of interviews Jay filmed on his daughter Ella's birthday every year from age 2 to 18, where he asks her a series of questions about certain aspects of life, and that he's watched only now. As a subject, Ella is captivating and often funny. It's certainly not a new gimmick, although film's ability to function as a time capsule always fascinates me, but it does show that you don't really need a lot of resources to make a documentary short as long as you have a compelling story, and I find that inspiring. Stranger at the Gate starts out seemingly like a true crime thriller before turning into something very different. It tells the story of Richard McKinney, whose career in the Marine Corps led him to develop personal demons that manifested into hatred. In 2009, he tried to bomb an Islamic center in Muncie, when he met the people he intended to kill, he found his mind change in ways that went farther than he ever anticipated. It's a film that delivers an unexpected and welcome spot of hope or lightness in what is frequently a stereotypically depressing category. But I think I'll let someone with more experience talk about this one. What's your name? Joshua Seftel. And what short did you do? I did Stranger at the Gate. What do you want to tell people about your short? I would say um, it's a story about how love can conquer hate. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. said, The Elephant Whisperers is a documentary from India about a couple living on an elephant camp that's the largest wild space for Asian elephants. In particular, it focuses on ragu, an elephant they're raising. Exquisitely shot, this documentary is unbelievably heartwarming. Much of this has to do not with the humans, but with the elephants, who are absolutely adorable. Of course, you really feel for the film's human subjects also, who use their caring for the animals to get through the tragedy in their lives. This one is an absolute crowd-pleaser, and a great story of humanity in harmony with nature. The Martha Mitchell effect is told through archival footage and chronicles the story of Martha Mitchell, the wife of John Mitchell, the Attorney General under Nixon. Her outsized, outspoken, and sometimes outrageous personality made her a sensation in the press and an outlier among White House women. 
But when she learned about her husband's role in Watergate, her attempts to speak out about it had disturbing consequences, and her reputation betrayed her. The title comes from the term for when a person's claims are dismissed as delusional, but end up being right. If The Elephant Whisperers is a feel-good nature doc, Haul Out is a feel-bad nature doc, but an absolutely masterful one. In Siberia, a marine biologist chronicles the largest walrus haul out on Earth, which in layman's terms means he's surrounded by a sea of walruses. But this astonishing sight has a sobering cause. Make no mistake, and I know how amusing it is to see a ton of walruses all at the same time, this is ultimately a pretty depressing doc, with a devastating conclusion. But it's also short documentary filmmaking at its finest, presenting mesmerizing material that you'd never find in a live-action fictional short, and carrying a powerful message in the process. As for the winner, it's a tough one. I'd really say The Elephant Whisperers and Haul Out are the two top contenders for me, and it's hard to say which one I'd pick, though I've heard Elephant Whisperers is the predicted winner. Haul Out has already won the most awards, though, as I've learned, that may not always translate to a win. I guess for the purposes of this video, I'd go with Haul Out just for the sheer spectacle only possible through documentary filmmaking. But this is by no means the concrete prediction, and both shorts definitely have a chance, along with possibly some others. We'll see who the winners are, but for now, you can check out many of these shorts online, or on streaming or on demand. Stay tuned for more of my coverage of this year's Oscar nominees. Hey everyone, if you liked this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, well, maybe you'll like the next one. I have a lot more planned.